Today we're going to be here at Universal Studios Florida. This is going to be fun. Hi everybody, welcome to the world of Micah. Today I am here at Universal Studios Florida to show you guys what the park looked like June 7th, 1990. The day and the year that this park opened. We're getting pretty close to the 30th anniversary of this park and I decided to gather some photographs and travel around the park and show you guys what this place looked like nearly 30 years ago. Let's take a closer look. Let's take a closer look. Our first stop is to talk about this globe. Now this globe has completely changed and the globe that used to be here now resides out in sunny Hollywood, California. And I'm not quite sure that's exactly where the globe was to begin with. Here's why. If you look at this photograph I have, it shows the globe kind of over in this area because in the distance is the now Blue Man Group, which back in 1990 was the home of Nickelodeon Studios. Now right about here, if you look over to stage 19, the yellow soundstage to the left of the screen, you can see the tops of that building and you can see the globe right here. That's about where the globe was sitting in this photograph. Pretty crazy, 30 years ago, a completely different globe was sitting right over there and so many people were taking photos right in front of it. And if you think that's crazy, 30 years ago, your family would have parked right here at City Walk because there was no City Walk back in 1990. You and your family could have driven literally to the front of the entrance which is our next stop. Now they are filming here today, so I've gotta be kinda of quick with what I'm about to show you. This is the entrance now, and if you guys look at this photograph, it has completely changed. They have a brand new entrance that we see today, but back in 1990, this is what the entrance looked like. So crazy. I mean, it's, it's kinda of similar, but it's very different. And I have one more photo to show you guys. Right about here is where the light limousine was driving, as you can see in this photograph, and making its way into the studios for the grand opening. And this is what Nickelodeon looks like as of 2019. As you can see, pretty much the only thing that looks the same is the building shape itself. The slime geyser, the orange Nickelodeon sign, and all the wacky designs all over the building have faded into the past. And a few years ago, I did a video here with my good buddy Mike showcasing what Nickelodeon looked like back in the day. I'll be sure to put that link in the description box. All right, first stop is right here at the fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera, one of my favorite rides as a kid. You were trying to catch Elroy on a high speed, well, not really high speed, but it made you think like it was a high speed, motion theater that used 3Ds. Now, this was the 90s. Not a lot of people were doing these back in the day, so this was one of a kind for its time. And I love traveling through the different worlds of Scooby-Doo and the Flintstones, trying to catch Elroy and return him back home to his family, the Jetsons. Next stop's right here at the now Shrek 4D, presented in Ogre Vision, but back in the 90s, this was a place for the master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock himself. This was Alfred Hitchcock, the art of making movies. Kind of a completely different idea than, than Hitchcock going with, with Shrek for nowadays. I miss Hitchcock. I really do. And here's another shot of the side of the art of making movies with Alfred Hitchcock. You can see the, the three photographs are still here, but they are completely different. And there used to be some overhangs, some little poles that would pop out between the last and the middle photo. Those are now gone. So wild. I still remember the art of making movies. All right, we've made our way completely inside the park now. And our next stop is right over here, 
which used to be known as the Boneyard. And it was a place where classic movie props were stored and you could walk up and see them. Check this out. It still says theatrical and television production facilities. And you can see on the wall in this photograph, they were advertising Child's Play 2. Now, of course, this was long before Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket would make its way here to Universal Studios. And this was still accessible to normal park guests. Now, this is pretty insane. As you can see in this photograph, there are some props from Back to the Future. And right in the distance, you can see an advertisement for the Ghostbusters Spooktacular, an old show that used to be in the same building that now houses Race Through New York with Jimmy Fallon. Pretty crazy, right? That building right there and right where we were standing used to be a gravel dirt road that housed so many different props from back in the day. All throughout here were different props from different movies. And now everyone comes here to take up some sunshine in the fake grass. And right about here is where this photograph was taken of Jaws. Look to the far right corner and you can see the tip top of Soundstage 23. And right there where Jaws was, he was blocking the little bottom of Soundstage 22 that you could see. And to the left of him was Soundstage 21, which is now being blocked by a huge screen and stage. Long before Twister and Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon, a couple of Ghostbusters used to live inside this building. And the entrance used to be right down there. Right about here is where this photograph was taken. You can see the Ghostbusters logo right there on the then firehouse. And the building right next to it, that weird odd shape is still here after all these years. But take a closer look because Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket is now going through the Ghostbusters firehouse. And back in 1990, that wasn't a thing. Pretty wild. Now in this photograph, you can see it said 89 Engine Company, the Ghostbusters logo, and that street light was actually facing us. Now it's facing to the right. I didn't know you could change street lights locations. Kind of weird. And like I said, there wasn't a Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket busting through the building in this photograph. But don't worry, they still pay tribute to the 89 engine. Check that out. Well, that does it for this location. If you want to know more about the old Ghostbuster Spooktacular show, I did a video not too long ago. I'll put the link to the video in the description box. Next spot is right here at the Museum of Antiques, the House of Revenge of the Mummy. But back in 1990, this is the building that housed the big one himself, King Kong. As you can see in this photograph, not a whole lot has really changed. Just a few new signs and they changed a little bit of the painting and added some hieroglyphics and there used to be a little overhang right in front of the entrance because that was where the queue was. But the entrance to the mummy and King Kong are the exact same. You go into that building straight ahead. Another side to the King Kong attraction you can see in this photograph. Pretty cool in the Paradise Building was home to the home video adventure where basically they would put you in front of a green screen and you could make your own home video adventure to take home with you. That attraction really didn't last that long, but it's cool to match this up. And the reason I can is because that Regal Cafe sign is right up in the corner. Not a whole lot has changed, but enough has changed to see a 30 year difference. And right here was where the old Animal Actors sign was. Now it's Animal Actors on location. But as you can see, the building has gotten a paint job and they've added quite a bit of banners and they got a whole new sign for the show. The building, however, has not changed its shape at all since 1990. And now let's visit Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone, which houses two attractions that are from opening day. The E.T. Adventure and E.T.'s Toy Closet pretty much looks the exact same. As you can see, the line used to stretch all the way out here back in the 90s. And if you look up to the left hand 
up in the distance you can see the top of the water slide from the Fifle Goes West playset area. But E.T., you are still looking the same. In fact, here's a little better shot, as you can see up in the left hand. There used to not be all those trees and shrubbery blocking the Fifle play area from E.T. But man, the E.T. line used to be insane. Just imagine a ton of ropes, stanchions, and a bunch of people waiting to ride one of the greatest rides of all time, the E.T. Adventure. Walking around out here, you can still see where the stanchions went from back in the 90s. This used to be the line. It would go all through here and even down in that area as well. Now the next photograph is pretty cool. It takes place in Fifle's Playland and the reason I chose to show this is because for one there used to be a show over here in Fifle's Playland that had Tiger from the movie Fifle's Goes West in the show and it was like a big animatronic puppet that would show up and I think they sing songs and did some stuff for kids and families but the reason I chose this photo, if you look in the distance, you'll see Mother's House from the Bates Motel. Because the Psycho House used to be here. They did have a Psycho House here back in the day. And that's the reason why I chose this photo. It's, it's pretty wild. Let's go take a closer look. Welcome to the set. Good old Fifel. Right here is where this photograph was taken. And the reason I know is because the Sandy Sardine tin can be seen in the photo as well as that bone right there in the background. Right over here was a stage they had set up. Tiger was in a big can right about there. Fifel was to the left. And right here where that tree was, way in the distance, was the Psycho House. Oh man, how cool is that? You can even see this little overhang right here in this photograph. That's so wild to me. And did you guys know back in the 90s, there was a nighttime lagoon stunt show that happened all throughout this lagoon. Just imagine a ton of high-speed boats doing really cool tricks, guns, explosions, all kinds of stuff. I found a ton of photos online, but it was really hard to kind of match up anything because they're high speed chases with boats. The camera back in the 90s could only catch <laughs> so many things, especially the kind of cameras people were bringing to the theme parks. Weren't as high tech as the ones we have now, but you guys can imagine jumping some boats over here and explosions over here and all kinds of crazy stuff. And right here was Amity. This is where Captain Jake's boat tours, the Jaws ride, all of it originally was back in the 90s. Now, as you can see, it's completely different. There's not a whole lot that you can really tell that this was Amity. But there are two little things that I always smile at when I come here that remain from Amity Island. Walk up to this window and you can see it says, Amity Ship fitters and riggers since 1879. You also have the Amity Island Lobster Company building that is holding on. I really love that that's still here. And nowadays, good old Bruce the Shark hangs out right over here next to Lombard's Landing. At least he's still here. One way to figure out exactly where Amity was was finding this photo. Now, of course, I know exactly where Amity was because as a kid, I came here. But for people who've never been here before, especially in the 90s, this building in this photograph you can see, and right over here is where that Amity 4th of July celebration sign was. Easy way to match it up, because that building is the exact same. However, the building next to it has undergone quite a quite a facelift. If you look in this photograph right here, you can see that this was the building that once housed Earthquake, the big one. Right across there it said Earthquake, and this was the entrance. Pretty crazy. You would board a, a underground tram and take the subway all the way, well, you were traveling towards Embarcadero, and we didn't quite make it. 
because the tremor started and the earthquake took over. Pretty cool attraction for its time. I really miss it. The good thing is there's still a version of it out in Hollywood. And the good thing is this building is still here. Even though this is now the ride for the Fast and the Furious. And if you're searching for something from back in the day of Earthquake, be sure to visit Richter's Burger Company because it still pays tribute to that classic attraction. In fact, they're world famous for their Earthquake burgers, such as the big one and the San Andreas. My oh my, what 30 years can do to someone. Well, they completely destroyed the Murder, She Wrote mystery theater that was once here. Straight ahead was where that building once was back in the 90s, and now it is the home to the Transformers 3D attraction. There's pretty much nothing left, not even the shell of the building is the same. And walking around the base of the building, the sidewalks are not even the same. The only way I know is because I know exactly where this photo was taken from being a guest back in the 90s, as well as the buildings over to the right from Delancey Street. So crazy. I loved the Murder, She Wrote Mystery Theater. That was one of my favorite shows here. And check out this photograph from opening day. You can see all the different film crews and news stations gathering around to see all the different celebrities who are making their way onto the studio lot for the grand opening of Universal Studios Florida. Pretty much nothing has changed the Pantages Theater. Now the Universal Orlando Horror Makeup Show has changed quite a bit over the years, but the theater itself and the marquee has not changed. Now this was called the Phantom of the Opera Horror Makeup Show, the gory, gruesome, and grotesque horror makeup show back in the 90s. Still happy to see that this show is still here. Good to see you. Hey, about lunch, to you, mate. Sorry. So rude. Sorry. Just wanted to say hey. Hey, how you doing, pal? Good. Good. Right, I like could have said your name three times, well, but I said BJ. That's, so. That's, okay. Nobody says the name right. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you, BJ. Yeah. Well, I wish I could say the same. Yeah. 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 Bye. Well, you guys, I think we did it. I think we found all the spots I wanted to show on this journey back to the year 1990 here at Universal Studios, which means it's time. To say goodbye and if you enjoyed this video give it a big thumbs up so thanks for watching everybody and thanks for traveling around Universal Studios with me today as I showed you guys what the place looked like 30 years ago if you haven't yet go ahead and click that subscribe button it's free it'll keep you updated with my latest video if you would like to support this channel please head over to my patreon page patreon.com slash world of Micah we're donating one dollar a month you can help fund episodes just like this. I'll see you on the next episode of World of Mike, everybody. Until then, stay weird. Goodbye. <laughs>